This video will be an introduction to coordinate systems. This is critical stuff and where a depressing number of mistakes are made, so it's important to understand. For fuller understanding, you'll want to read Chapter 4, Understanding Coordinate Systems, of our book, Using GIS in Wildland Search and Rescue. If I may modestly say, this chapter is one of the best and most accessible summaries of the subject around. For that, co-author Vanessa Glenn Lenaris gets a major attaboy for writing most of it. An understanding of coordinate systems is central to using GIS not only effectively, but safely. It happens too often that emergency responders are sent to the wrong locations as a result of not understanding the string of numbers they're given of an emergency location, or they don't know how to properly enter those numbers such that they can successfully find the correct location on a map. Delays in emergency response, sometimes fatal, have occurred. One of the goals of our book and this training series is to establish a short list of protocols and a workflow that reduces or eliminates the possibility of error. An in-depth understanding of coordinate systems can be complex and even frightening for the math challenge among us, and that includes me. For this video, I'll just cover the basics, but I strongly encourage everyone to read the entire chapter in the book. Coordinate systems, of course, are used to find a specific point on the surface of the Earth. We will only be looking at x and y coordinates, or latitude and longitude. To accurately find a point, you need to know what coordinate system is being used. The second cr critical piece of information is a coordinate system's datum. The datum is a reference point or model of the Earth's surface that's used for deriving those coordinates. You don't really need to know how it works, but you do need to make sure you have a coordinate system's datum before you use the coordinates. Once you know what coordinate system you're using and its datum, you need to know how to find the spot represented by the coordinates you're given, or how to establish a point and derive the coordinates from that position. In the past, a paper map was the standard way to do this. Now, of course, you can use your smartphone, GPS, online software, websites, or a program on your computer. We'll use a couple of these to give you an idea of your options. As you probably realize, it's this wide access to instant coordinate mapping that's driving the need for classes like this. There are two common types of coordinate systems, geographic and projected. Geographic coordinate systems are based on a spherical surface and use two angular measurements from the center of the Earth to describe a location. The familiar latitude-longitude coordinates of 36 degrees, 46 minutes, 39 seconds north, and 118 degrees, 25 minutes, 36 seconds west are an example of geographic coordinates. You're likely familiar with the network of lines of latitude and longitude on which a map is drawn. The lines that run north-south are longitude and fan out from the prime meridian, ranging from 180 to minus 180 degrees. This can also be written as 180 degrees east to 180 degrees west. The prime meridian is zero degrees longitude, and by convention usually passes through or near the Royal Observatory of Greenwich in southeast London. East of the prime meridian is indicated by either E, or the absence of the negative sign, occasionally, but rarely, written with a plus sign. West of the prime meridian is indicated by a W, or a negative minus sign. This last point is vital to remember. I got called one night by a ranger who was trying to plot the location of an emergency backcountry call. The coordinates were plotted to China. Without even asking the coordinates, I suggested she put a minus sign in front of the longitude. Shazam! Success! The other class of coordinate types are projected coordinate systems. They represent the Earth by flattening out the terrain, like a sheet laid over the round surface. They are measured not in angles or degrees from the center of the Earth, but in grids and units of zones in meters and feet. Flattening 3D terrain into a grid necessarily creates distortions of different dimensions, such as distance, area, shape, and direction. There are a number of different projections depending on the needs and geographic area of the maps. For our purposes, projected coordinate systems are very useful and accurate over small areas and are often used in search and rescue and for recreational uses. UTM coordinate systems are an example of what we'll often use. Also, you can calculate areas when using any of the projected coordinate systems, which is not possible using the geographic coordinate systems. Also note that coordinates are represented as X and Y. This is almost always true when plotting universal transverse mercator, or UTM. 
coordinates. Remember that y is equivalent to latitude. The x, of course, is longitude. The critical point, though, isn't so much if you're dealing with a projected or geographic coordinate system, but that you become familiar with the main types of coordinate systems, recognize their formatting, and can clearly communicate coordinates in a variety of systems and know how to use them. Let's wrap up this section by going over the five main formats for coordinate systems and where you might see and use them. The first three are geographic coordinate systems, and the last two are types of projected coordinate systems that are commonly used. In addition to the coordinates, it's also critical, as I said before, that you give the datum, such as North American Datum 83, almost always referred to as NAD 83, or World Geodetic System 84, WGS 84. And I'll go over that a little more uh, in a little bit. First in the table is decimal degrees. You'll often see it abbreviated, especially in a GPS unit, as DD or here, uppercase DD dot lowercase DD to indicate the format of, in this example, 36.77733 degrees. When you give it verbally to another person, you'd say, datum is WGS84 and coordinates in decimal degrees of 36.77733 by negative 118.42657. Decimal degrees are commonly used by satellite-based location devices such as Spot, GeoPro Messenger, PLBs, and OnStar, but if you receive an emergency call from them, never assume. Always ask what coordinate system and datum they're using. Next is degrees decimal minutes, or uppercase dd dot mm dot lowercase mm. Here we show a latitude of 36 degrees and 46.640 minutes north by 118 degrees, 25.36 minutes west. Instead of north or west, the north can be assumed and say negative 118 degrees for the longitude. This type of coordinate system is often used by aviation, helicopters commonly use it, and marine vessels. Last of the geographic coordinate systems is the familiar degrees, minutes, and seconds, represented as DMS, latitude, longitude, or often lat long. You'd read them as 36 degrees, 46 minutes, 37 seconds north, by 118 degrees, 25 minutes, and 36 seconds west. It's important that you carefully identify each number as degrees, minutes, or seconds. Don't use pauses between numbers, assuming the other person knows that a pause is supposed to represent degrees. Many SAR teams and all USGS paper maps use lat long. UTM, Universal Transverse Mercator, is a projected coordinate system. Again, that's like a two-dimensional layer laid over a three-dimension terrain and a grid put on top of it, or taking the skin of an orange and trying to lay it flat. UTM coordinates are defined by the location's UTM zone, that is, which of the 60 zones that cover the planet your location is within, and then the XY co coordinates, which is meters north and east. Both a GPS and a USGS topo map will tell you your XY coordinates and zone. You'd read the coordinates as NAD 27, zone 11N, easting 4071120 by northing 37697. UTM is the standard for many SAR teams, as well as the coordinate system many federal agencies use for their data. Because UTM is in horizontal meters, you can fairly easily get an idea of the distance between two points. One last example is the U.S. National Grid, or USNG. Again, this is a projected coordinate system and uses zones and meters to represent the XY location on a grid. One advantage is that the coordinates are given as a single string. So, as with our example, you'd say 11 SLA 76997-1120. You might also want to read the letters using the phonetic alphabet for the letters. So, SLA is Sierra Lima Alpha. In USNG, the coordinates are X and Y combined in a paired set, along with the zone location, so the red is a single string. This is a fairly new system that is being adopted nationwide for emergency responders in SAR and FIRE. However, it's been very slow in adoption, and at the moment, USGS maps don't include it. For fuller explanation, be sure to read the USNG section in Chapter 4. Finally, when identifying coordinates, you need to make sure you supply or make sure you have the correct datum. 
Because the Earth is not a perfect sphere, more like a bumpy pear, different models are used to imitate the Earth's shape. These models are adjusted occasionally as more information or precision becomes available. Reporting the datum associated with a set of coordinates is critical to accurately locating that spot on the Earth. The primary datums you need to be familiar with are NAD27. Many USGS topographic maps are based on this datum. The others are NAD83 and WGS84. For our purposes, these last two aren't that far apart when using one or the other. However, there can be a significant difference between those and NAD27, such that you wind up on the other side of a ridge or river if you give them incorrectly. Not to beat this point into the ground, but the most important thing you need to remember is that when giving coordinates, you give the datum, identify the coordinate type, then give the coordinates, carefully including all descriptors such as degrees, minutes, seconds, north, west, or minus, where appropriate. If you're receiving coordinates from someone, be sure to ask for clarification if they're not clear. I found you sometimes need to go back to the original source to make absolutely sure. A best practice is to ask for a hard copy by mail, even a screenshot if the coordinates are coming from an emergency center such as SPOT or InReach. As an exercise, you might want to pause the video or come back to this slide and practice repeating the format for sending coordinates. That may seem a little weird, but really, um, it's, it's important. In the next video, we'll see how to use software to find coordinates you're given or establish coordinates on a digital map. If you're taking Making a Basic Map with ArcGIS 10, we'll use Arc 10. For GIS and Making Maps, I'll demonstrate with ArcGIS Explorer.